We're here on a permanency hearing. Um, Ms. Gutierrez is with us for the department. Casa is with us. Mr. Ingram is with us representing the children. Mr. Jackson is with us representing Mr. Dorman, who I see is with us. And Mr. Adams is with us representing the mother, Ms. Lampy, who is with us. That accounts for everyone. I don't have anyone in the waiting room. So Ms. Gutierrez, you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. The department calls Ada Ledford as its witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Ada, who do you work for? St. Francis Ministries. What did you, What do you do for them? I'm a permanency specialist. Okay, thank you. Did you prepare a court report in this case on March 15th of 2023? Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, we ask that the court take judicial notice of that court report. All right, so noted and I have read the report. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, Ada, are there any updates regarding the child Vivian since the filing of that court report? Um, I don't believe so. She has started daycare with Ella after school. Um, she goes to the daycare. But other than that, I don't believe there's any updates. Okay. And... Has, are there any updates regarding Hazley Dorman since the filing of the court report? No. Mm -mm. I know Foster. Any... Sorry. Please answer. I know Foster Home is planning a trip. Um, I think it's like in July, if just in case uh, Hazley is with them. But other than that, there's been no no changes. Okay. Are there any updates regarding Ella? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, now, Ella's county of placement says Florida, USA. Has she been moved to Florida? No, she's still in her foster home in, in Lubbock. Okay, so she would be in Lubbock County. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. I do okay. see that error. And are there any updates regarding Remy? Um, Remy had tubes put in her ears in February. She's doing well. She was sick for a little bit, but she's doing okay now. Um, her home is also planning trips for her coming up in May and June. What is, is the trip for Remy out of the country? In June, yes, ma'am. It's another cruise. Okay. And what is the destination of this cruise? I believe it's uh, Cozumel. Okay. And are we asking the court to approve that trip as well? Yes. Okay. Um, now, which of the children are placed together at this time? Vivian and Ella. And how are they doing in that placement? Um, they're doing okay. Um, they get their therapy through, Vivian gets her OT and her speech through school. Um, Ella, I believe, is also getting some speech as well. Um, they seem to be improving with, like, Vivian is able to put longer sentences together. Um, she's able to put on her clothes by herself. Her motor skills are improving. Okay. And the court had previously ordered that those things um, be handled by foster placement and it sounds like they're following through is that correct yes ma'am all except for the aba therapy because they've they don't have any resources around them for that okay so that's due to limited resources now you said a b therapy aba aba can you explain what that is please um yes so it's for children who have autism um I'm not exactly sure what all they do, um, but it's to help them. Um, it's to help them with that, with having the autism. Okay. And is Vivian continuing in her play therapy? Yes. Okay. And is Hazley in play therapy? Yes, she is. Okay. Is Ella in play therapy as well? Yes. Okay. Are any of the children receiving any other therapies than what you've identified here? No, ma'am. Are any of these children on psychotropic medications? Yes, uh, Vivian and Hazley. Okay. And 
what med what medications is Vivian on? What are those addressing? Um, so behavior. So she's on guanfazine, three milligrams, and so it helps with um, like to calm her, helps with behaviors. Okay, and what medications is Hazley on? Guanfazine, two milligrams. Okay, and for the same purpose. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now let's go ahead and switch to um, visitation. Is Mr. Dorman visiting the children? Yes. How are those visitations going? They're going pretty well. Could you give me some details? Yes, ma'am. So the um, Vivian and Ella are able to see him in person. Um, so they get to interact more. Um, Remy does too. Most of the time, sometimes if she's sick, like they'll do virtual as well with her. But Hazley, hers is virtual and she doesn't really have the best attention span. So sometimes that's a little hard to um, to work that visit. But they go pretty good. The girls um, love to see him. They play together. Okay. Are there any concerns with those visits? No. Now, as far as Michelle Lampy's visitation with the children, is her visitation the same? Yes. Okay. And do Michelle's sides of the visits go well? Yes. Are there any concerns with those? No. Now let's talk about parental progress. How is Mr. Dorman doing on his service plan? Um, progress has seemed to stop. Um, he has not done the Ozar that was court ordered last time. Um, from what I'm being told by his therapist, he's missing a lot of visits. Um, he fell to drug screen last month for me. And when was his last hair follicle drug screen? He had one in January. Okay, Your Honor, at this time, we offer petitioners Exhibit 1. It is an affidavit of business records with um, an accompanying attachment of drug screens, including the January drug screen for Mr. Dorman. All right, objections? All right, then petitioners 1 is admitted. Thank you, Your Honor. That, that drug screen is in evidence. Can you go ahead and tell us what the results were? Yes, the hair follicle was positive um, for benzoyl uh, lecanine at 5,064, um, the level for um, co cocaethylene, it's positive at 992, cocaine metabolite positive at 50,371, and norcocaine is positive at 724. Level 724. Now, did did Michelle Lampy was she asked to drug screen last month as well? Yes. Okay. Did she comply with that request to drug screen? Um, not in February, no, ma'am. And throughout the case, have Ms. Dorman, Mr. Dorman and Ms. Lampy seemed to relapse together? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Was Ms. Dorman hair follicle drug screened in January as well? Yes, ma'am. And did those results cause you concern? Yes. Okay. Are there any services, additional services, that we are asking the court to order? No additional ones at this time. Okay. Are we requesting any changes to visitation? No. Not to my knowledge. What is the current goal in the case? Um, relative fictive can adoption is the primary goal. And what is the concurrent goal? Family reunification. When was the primary goal changed to adoption? I believe this was changed around the last court hearing. I don't have an exact date on the court report that I can see. Is Was the um, family or their attorneys notified? Everybody should have been notified, yes, ma'am. 
Now, as far as Michelle Lampy's um, other services besides drug screening, how is how is her progress on those? Um, recently, I mean, she'll if I if I text her, she'll text me back. Um, but I haven't been able to nail down a time to go see her. She didn't drug screen for me in February. She hasn't completed her court ordered Ozar. Um, so progress with her has kind of stopped as well. Now, both Michelle Lampy and Mr. Dorman were ordered a few months back to attend like AA or NA, some type of outpatient. Um, is that still occurring? Yes, they they both attend um, NA from what they're reporting to me. Okay, and both have completed inpatient, however, have relapsed on cocaine following that. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, now, as far as family placement for the children, what efforts is St. Francis taking to place these children with family? We have... Um, two ICPCs that are out at this time. One is on Lori and Todd Hubbard for Vivian and Ella. And the other one is on Aaron and Nicole Munden um, for Remy and Hazley. And how are those two potential placements related to the children? They are the, um, the Hubbards are the maternal grandparents and the Mundens are the maternal aunt and uncle. And what state are these ICPC home studies being conducted? Florida. And Florida typically takes several months to return ICPC studies. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Are we requesting that the court order any drug screens today? Yes. A hair follicle and a UA for both parents. Pass the witness. All right, thank you. Um, several questions, Ms. Ledford. Do you believe that to return the children to either parent or both parents today would be a continuing danger to their physical health and safety? Due to the continued drug use, yes, sir. And so do you believe it would be contrary to the children's welfare to be returned to their parents today? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I heard the testimony you gave about one of the kid, kiddos going on the cruise. Uh, if, if everyone will check, I think I've already signed that order, but just to be sure if y'all will check, I, I remember signing an order for a child to go on a cruise, which made me happy. So, Yes, sir. I believe uh, so. I, I have that order. Um, I believe you signed it. Okay, good. All right. We talked some about the drug test. Mr. Dorman's test, he was, uh, he was positive. Let me get my notes here to be sure. Positive uh, on a hair strand for cocaine in November. Uh, then in January, he was positive again, and his levels had gone up. Is that correct? Yes. All right. And as far as Miss Lampy, she was also positive in January. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Dorman also failed to test in February. And then Miss Lampy was positive in January, and then also she failed to test in February. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And I read in your report that uh, it, because of Miss Lampy's relapse that uh, y'all were trying to get her back in Senecor for further rehab. Is is that still ongoing or what? Well, we're wanting um, both her and Mr. Dorman to complete the court-ordered um, OZAR um, so that we, we can see what the recommendations are from that. Okay, so you want them to follow any recommendations that come out of the second OZAR? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Okay, then. Um, Mr. Adams, questions? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Ms. Ledford, you talked to Ms. Lampy about the fictive kin adoption uh, option. About the primary goal? Yes, sir. And has she indicated whether she's willing to accept that? Um, I mean, they've, they've seemed to accept that, that we have changed the goal and, and she was okay with doing the home studies on, on her relatives. And has she admitted to you a relapse in December? Yes. But she hasn't admitted anything. I mean, she's indicated that she's been clean since then. Is that correct? I believe so. The last visit I had with them was in February. And I believe that um, she said the last use was at the end of the year. I have no further questions, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. 
Ms. Ledford, uh, in your testimony, you indicated that uh, that you your last contact uh, with the with the Ms. Lamp and Mr. Dorman was in February. My last face to face visit was in February. Okay. Uh, any any particular reason why you stopped doing the face to face visits? So I've been trying to, I've spoke to Michelle and I'm trying to get a time nailed down to come see them. And she keeps telling me that she'll get with me about a good time, but she never does. Okay. All right. Do you ever reach out to Mr. Dorman in that regard? Um, I do reach out to him sometimes. A lot of it goes through Michelle because he has, I mean, indicated that he lets her kind of handle that stuff, but um, I have reached out to him sometimes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh -huh. Ms. Lefford, has either parent given you an excuse as to why they failed the drug test in February? Um, Ms. Lampy did say that she um, was working and so she couldn't, she was trying to find a time to do it. Um, yes, sir. Okay. All right. All right. Mr. Ingram, questions? No questions. All right. Then, uh, Ms. Gutierrez, anything further from the department? Your Honor, I'd like to ask just one clarifying question of Ms. Ledford. Okay. Um, Ada, you had said, um, I'm sorry, Your Honor, let, let's strike that and move on. Thank you. No, nothing further? Nothing further, Your Honor. All right, then. Mr. Adams, did you have witnesses? Uh, I'd like to call my client, Ms. Lampy. Mr. Adams. Ms. Lampy, are you working? Yes, I am. And I work six to seven days a week. Okay, where do you work? Um, have you been taking up uh, shifts for other people that have been off? Yes. Okay. Uh, you're not unwilling to take a test today, are you? No, sir. I'm not, no. You're willing to do what whatever the department asks you to do today? Yes, sir. Okay. How do you feel about the uh, fictive kin adoption option? Um, I would rather them go with, yes, family. I don't want them to be adopted out to anyone else. So that's how I feel right now at the moment. Okay. Uh, no further questions, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Gutierrez, any questions for Ms. Lampy? Um, yes, Your Honor. Ms. Lampy, what is one thing? It's a children's boutique, like where people come in to sell or buy used children's items. Okay, so you're not actually left alone with children, are you? No, ma'am. No. So it's not I'm, any type I'm, of daycare? No, no, ma'am. No, it's a children's boutique where they buy and sell children's clothes. Okay, thank you. Pass the witness. Mr. Jackson, questions? No questions, Your Honor. Mr. Ingram? No questions. Mr. Adams, any further witnesses? No, Your Honor. We rest. Thank you. Mr. Jackson, witnesses? Yes, sir. I call uh, Mr. Dorman, thank please. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Uh, Cody, uh, you heard the questions that uh, Mr. Adams asked Michelle. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And what is your position as far as relative placement or adoption is concerned i'm perfectly fine with that um the grandparents have been in their lives most of their lives uh they they do great with them um and as well with uh, michelle's sister their aunt um so yes they've been around them quite a bit and i'm perfectly okay with that um are you currently employed no sir is uh have, are you taking steps to uh to get employed Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What, do, what have you done to do that? I went to uh, a place at Hodgetown. They had a uh, work. Um, what are they? Job. I, a job fair. There you go. Yeah. Um, that's what I went to just the other day. Um, I've been doing things online um, as well. Um, Indeed and stuff like that. Um, just trying to find a good fit to to be able to work with Michelle's schedule and to be able to to fit with mine. Okay. And uh, you wouldn't have any issue 
uh, showing up for a drug test in, in the event that you order. You will be ordered for drug test today, I'm sure. Yes, sir. No, sir. I have no problem with that. Okay. All right. I'll pass the witness. All right. Um, anyone else have questions for Mr. Dorman? Ms. Gutierrez? Yes, Your Honor. Go ahead. Um, Mr. Dorman, you mentioned that you are trying to find a job that works around Michelle's schedule. Why is that? Um, just so we can both keep a job. Do you have a valid license yet? No, ma'am, and we'll not have one for another year. And I don't want you to tell me exactly where you live, but what city do you currently reside in? Amarillo. Are you aware that Amarillo has a public transit system? Well, of course, and I've checked into it several times, and so has my family to even help me check into that. And it is it is not a very um, job-dependable transportation, let's put it that way. The times are do not work out very well. You cannot count on it. Um, it is just not a very accurate transportation to rely on. And are you currently living with Michelle Lampy? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you realize that just because a home study has been started on relatives doesn't necessarily mean that that home study will pass or will be an adoption. Yes, ma'am. Okay, pass the witness. Anyone else have further questions for Mr. Dorman? All right, then, Mr. Jackson, any other witnesses? No questions, John. No, sir. All right. Mr. Ingram, any witnesses? No witnesses. All right. Mr. Ingram, recommendations? Department to remain temporary remain to conservatory placement to remain as is. The kids are being well cared for. With regard to visitation, if the parents do not drug screen today, or if they are positive on the UA, or if the hair follicle test levels have gone up since January, I recommend visitation stop. Okay. All right. Thank you. CASA, anything to add? Thank you, Your Honor. Yes, uh, CASA does like to point out family strengths. Of course, uh, you know, uh, Michelle and Cody have both participated in inpatient um, and they are looking at some of the uh, service plans, services, but they're not following through, especially with the OSAR. Uh, but we also, uh, you know, if they're not participating in drug screens since January and their previous drug screens, you know, were showing positive, uh, that that is a concern. And, and we also have some concerns about, you know, to ensure they're on track with their children's therapeutic needs. They're not being proactive uh, in, in seeking those, uh, those tools and contacts that they've been given because uh, they need to learn about the children's therapy. And something that's really not added on the concerns and, and recommendations with CASA is that, yes, we know there's an ICPC. There's two of them out there in Florida. Uh, we, we do want the parents to understand uh, that if the children are court ordered to be placed there in Florida, that this is not a way for them to just go back to Florida, get their children back and just not have anything to, to worry about. Uh, we're making sure that the, the parents understand that, um, that in, in talking with the, the uh, relatives in Florida, they seem very protective uh, and of course, our recommendations to be court ordered to complete a hair and a urine drug screen today. Um, and our parents are going to be strongly encouraged to show that they're aware of their children's therapy requirements. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Then, based on what I've heard today, then I will continue the Department's temporary manager and conservator, continue all the children's current placements. I'll order both parents to both hair strand and UA drug screen by 4 p.m. today. I assume, are we back to, are we back to, uh, Care Express again? Yes, Your Honor. Yes. Okay, all right. I will order that if either parent is positive on their UA drug screen today, or if their hair strand drug screen is high, as, at higher levels than their last hair strand drug screen, then that parent's visitation will be suspended until they provide a negative UA and a, a lower hair strand test. Okay, we will have a final hearing in this case on June 5th. 2023. That will be by Zoom like today's hearing as far as I know. So parties and attorneys can go on the court's online docket to see exactly what time that hearing will take place. Um, 
Ms. Lampy, Mr. Dorman, I'll just tell you that uh, this court's feeling is if you can't get the drug use under control, uh, you know, you may or may not be doing the other services. This court looks first and foremost to be sure that you've got your drug use and uh, not under control, but eliminated. So, uh, and I will tell you that this case has not been extended, but I don't see any reason sitting here today that I won't go forward with the final hearing on June 5th, 2023. So, uh, just to let you know, the clock's ticking. We're here on a final hearing. Ms. Okay. Wiggins is with uh, us for the department. Mr. Ingram is with us representing the children. Mr. Hill is with us representing the father, Mr. Swinney, who is incarcerated. Uh, Ms. Mullinex is with us representing the mother, Ms. Valdez, who is with us. And Judge, at this time, I would like to offer all of my exhibits. Um, Petitioner's Exhibit 1 is a certified copy of the complaint. Um, it's a complaint against Justin Sweeney for aggravated robbery. Okay. Any objections? No. All right. Petitioner's one's admitted. And then Petitioner's Exhibit 2 is a certified copy of the indictment in Potter County charge, again, yes. against Justin Sweeney, um, this time for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. All right. Objections? No, you are. All right. Petitioner's two is admitted. And then Petitioner's Exhibit 3 is a certified copy of the service plan. Uh, Mr. Sweeney and Ms. Uh, Valdez's service plans were together, um, so it's just a certified copy of the plans. All right. Objections? No, you are. Okay. Petitioner's 3 submitted. And then Petitioner's Exhibit 4, it's a Potter County Sheriff's Office police report, cause Seven number five. Objections? Yes, Your Honor. I would object on my client's right, uh, constitutional right to confront and cross-examine. Um, Sixth Amendment rights uh, against whatever information would be negative in there against him. All right. Well, the Supreme Court's ruled that it, unless there's some showing that there's something about the report that makes it uh, not accurate or, 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 or I'm sorry, unless it demonstrates the source is not trustworthy, then it can be admitted. So okay. I will overrule that objection and I will admit petitioners exhibit four. All right, um, Ms. Wiggins. Thank you, Judge. I call Erica Smith. Okay, thank you, Ms. Wiggins. Thank you, Judge. Ms. Smith, how are you currently employed? I am a caseworker for family-based services with the Department of Family Protective Services. And were you still working in, or were you working in that capacity of June of 2021? Yes, I was. And were you given a case uh, referred to family-based safety services on a the Sweeney family? Yes. And what were the allegations that uh, referred the parents to family support or, or family based safety services? I'm sorry. Um, the allegations that opened the case were due to Evelina's meconium tests were positive for me for methamphetamines. I'm sorry. Her meconium test was positive for amphetamines. And then um, Tina, Justin, and Yuri all did hair follicles, and they were all positive for methamphetamines. And based on that information, um, did the parent seem willing um, to work services and therefore was sent to family-based safety services? Yes. And when you um, got the case, was a plan created to address the issues? Yes. And was a safety plan in place where they would be supervised by maternal grandmother? Yes. Now, in regards to the case that started uh, approximately August of 2020, is that right? Yes. And during the course of the case, um, did, um, did you meet with them on January 12th of 2021? I did. And did you speak with Mr. Sweeney about a recent drug screen? Yes. And what did he state about that drug screen? He had told me that he had, whenever I asked him why he was positive for marijuana, he had told me that when he had went to Houston to see his mother, he had used at that time. Now, in regards to Mr. Sweeney, um, were you given information that in January of 2021, he had been arrested? Yes. And um, was that for one of the charges, the aggravated assault with a deadly weapon? Yes. Now, at the time, um, did the safety plan, was it modified? 
It was. And was it modified to have, um, let's see, that Tina would supervise the children at all times with Justin? When, when he was positive for marijuana, that's what the modification was, yes. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. Um, and then in regards a little bit later on in the case, um, did was there a hair follicle drug screen done by Ms. Valdez? Yes. And on May 24th of 2021, did you speak with her about that drug screen? I did. And what did she say about the results of the screen? She had told me um, at that point, Justin had gotten out of jail and he was he was living in another residence and she had told me that he she had gone over to his residence and he was smoking methamphetamines and she had participated in smoking with him and um was that in behavior concerning considering the removal was the use of, use of methamphetamine around the children the Opening of the case. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Yes. Now, based on those results and that information, did the safety plan, was it modified again? It was. And what was the modification? Um, I had to ask Tina to move out of her mother's house and the kids remain with her mother at that time. And what was the uh, contact supposed to be in regards to the parents and the children? The Tina and Justin's contact would be supervised at the CPS office. Now, on June 16th of 2021, did you um, go to the place where the children were residing with the maternal grandmother? I did. And did you go inside the residence? I did. And what did you observe? It, I, I observed things to just be very strange. Um, and so whenever I asked grandmother, um, if I could look around the house before I left, um, she did allow me to. And when I went into her room and I looked into the bathroom and then I looked into the closet, um, she was unable to open the closet door the whole way. And I was able to see through the crack crack in the door um, that there was somebody in the closet. And um, did they come out of the closet? I, I did. I I said, Tina and Justin, y'all can come out of the closet. Um, and they did. Now, in regards to what you testified a little bit earlier about, it felt strange. Um, is, in that regards, did something about Yuri catch your attention? It did. He, he normally was very... Um, very hyper, very upbeat. He was, he always jumped around the house and was very active and would want to play and, and everything. And at that point he was not, he was just sitting there and he wasn't even talking to me. He was like, um, holding his mouth together, like really trying to keep his mouth together and it, that was not normal at all. And after you found or located um, Mr. Sweeney and um, Ms. Valdez in the house, did you ask them about Yuri? I did. And were they able to explain his behavior? No, they just said that there was nothing going on with him. Okay. Did she indicate whether or not she had told him not to say anything? She did. Yes, she did. She said that she that they had told him not to say anything to me. And at that time, um, was the case staff for removal of the children? Yes, it was. I'll pass the witness, Judge. Thank you, Miss Mullinex. Did you have any involvement with uh, the Ms. Valdez after the removal of the children? No, I did not. 
and pass the witness. Thank you, Mr. Hill. No questions. Mr. Ingram. No questions. All right, anything further of Ms. Smith? Uh, no, Your Honor. Can she be excused? Or do you need her? I do not need her. I'm Anyone not object? Okay, Ms. Smith, I'll go ahead and remove you so you can go about your day's business. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you. All right, Ms. Uh, Wiggins, next witness. Uh, I would call Haley Thank Grisham. You, Ms. Wiggins. Thank you, Judge. Uh, Ms. Grissom, how are you currently employed? I am a permanency specialist at St. Francis. And are you the caseworker for the Yui and uh, Yuri? I'm sorry, <laughs> Yuri and um, uh, Evelina. I'm so sorry. This morning I cannot pronounce children's things. I apologize. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And where are they currently placed? They are in a monastery return with their mother in Lubbock. And how are they doing with their mother? They're doing very well. She's done a really good job of, of addressing their needs and doing her best to get some things under control with Yuri, especially. Okay. And um, you did hear the testimony of Ms. Smith. Is that correct? Yes, I did. And has Ms. Valdez uh, worked her services and been able to mitigate the reasons for the removal from her? Yes, she has. Now, in regards to Mr. Sweeney, um, was a service plan created for him as well? Yes. And at the time of removal in June of 2021, he was out of jail. Is that correct? Yes. And he remained out of jail until December of 2021. Is that accurate? That is accurate. And during that time period, was he cooperative with the department regarding services? Um, from my case readings, he was somewhat cooperative. Okay. Did he complete any services while he was out that six months? No. And um, in regards to the services, where they attempt to address the drug use that he had? Yes. And was there also evidence of domestic violence? Yes, there was. And did he complete any services to address the domestic violence? No, ma'am. And the domestic violence was a, a, a pretty big issue for Yuri Sweeney, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And he had a lot of issues uh, that he had to address in counseling because of the domestic violence, is that right? Yes, yes. He's had a lot of issues with triggers. Now, in regards to um, Yuri and uh, uh, Evelina, do you believe it's in the children's best interest for his rights to be terminated to the children? Yes, ma'am. And why do you believe that? Um, Mr. Swinney is currently incarcerated and he's incarcerated for um, aggravated robbery and aggravated deadly assault with a weapon. So um, he is probably not going to be out for quite a while, from what I understand. So returning to him would be a danger to the children. And do you also believe it would be a danger due to the fact that he never addressed any of the reasons for the initial removal of the children? Yes, ma'am. And based on the inability of, of progress that we saw and his current pending legal actions um, that were during the pendency of the FBSS case, um, is that a concern for the department? Yes, ma'am. And in regards to the mother, um, are we asking that she be named the sole managing conservator of both children? Yes. And that the department and all other parties be dismissed? Yes, ma'am. And do you believe that would be in the children's best interest? I do. Now, in regards to Yuri, um, does he have, we indicated or we talked about he had some re issues regarding domestic violence. Um, has he expressed any anything regarding his father um, uh, wanting to see him or being afraid of him or anything like that? And not, not to me directly. Um, Several months ago, when he was in his foster home, he expressed things Judge, to them. I'm going to object to hearsay unless this witness can show, show she has personal knowledge of what was said. Sustain. Now, in regards to the department's decision to terminate his rights, um, do you believe that would be in line with uh, the best interests of the children? Yes. And would it be contrary to any information that you know about the children? Yes. Okay. Now, in regards to um, Mr. Sweeney, do you believe he is capable of caring for the children emotionally or physically in the long term? No. And why do you believe that? Um, just because of how what's 
progressed during this case, um, his unwillingness to participate in services or, or address the domestic violence, especially, and then the trauma that Yuri has gone through. Um, and because of his issues with his criminal, criminal issues right now, it does not look like he'll be able to do that. I'll pass the witness, Judge. All right, thank you, Ms. Monax. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Haley, with regard to Ms. Valdez, uh, has she done everything that the department has requested of her? Yes, ma'am. And you said that she, the kids are on a monitored return. So how long have they been with mom? Uh, they were placed back with her on November 20th of last year. And since that time, has she um, provided them safe housing? Yes. And she's gotten them into any kind of counseling that was needed? Yes, ma'am. And is there anything else that she's lacking um, that the department's requested of her? No, ma'am. She's completed everything. And so the, the plan, as you stated, is to have her name sole managing and the department to get out of it, correct? Yes. And with regard to Mr. Swinney, <laughs> is he in Potter County Detention Center? Yes. And has he been sentenced at this time or is it, are his cases still pending as far as you're aware? Pending as far as I'm aware. All right. I pass the witness, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Hill. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Ma'am, you uh, indicated that uh, Mr. Swinney would not be getting out of incarceration uh, anytime soon. Is that correct? From from what he's told me, correct. Okay. So he he has not pled guilty to anything. He has not been convicted of anything as of yet. Would that be accurate? That is accurate. Okay. So he is still presumed innocent, right? Correct. Now, since he's been in jail uh, since last December, December of 20, December of 21 or December of 22? December 21. December 21, yes, sir. Yeah, so he's been in jail for pushing a year and a half now, correct? That, that is correct. Okay, so he really has no ability to do any services while he's in jail, no meaningful services. Is that accurate? Uh, they do have some counseling and some other programs there um, at the jail. Okay. Did you make him aware of any of those programs? Yes, we discussed it several times. Okay. And uh, he indicated what? That he was interested, was not interested? What was his? Um, he told me that he was not interested um, because of his state of mind. He just wasn't in the right state of mind. Okay. And just, just to be clear, these charges that he is... Uh, in jail waiting the resolution of none of those are none, none of the alleged victims are uh, either Tina or his children, correct? Correct. Okay, thank you, ma'am. I'll pass witness. All right, thank you, Mr. Ingram. No questions. Okay. Anyone else have further questions for Ms. Grissom? Uh, I just have um, one follow up question. Uh, okay. Mr. Hill indicated that our talked about you discussing the cases with um, Mr. Sweeney and his in, in continued incarceration. You indicated that he said he would be in for quite some time. Can you elaborate on what he indicated? Um, the last discussion we had about it was that he expected to plead to a 15-year deal. I'll pass the witness, Judge. All right. Anyone else? A um, uh, couple of things, Ms. Grissom. There I heard testimony about domestic violence, and then I heard domestic violence and mentioned in the same sentence with Yuri. Uh, what, what is your understanding about the domestic violence? Was Yuri witnessed the domestic violence between oh, be, uh, between the parents. Yes, sir. Okay. And did did Yuri tell you about it? Did he describe it to you? Yes. Okay. Tell me what he told you about domestic violence that he saw. Um, Yuri told me that he had seen um, Justin choke his mom, um, kick his mom and push his mom. And that okay. there was one time that he saw him hold a knife to her neck. Okay. I'm sorry, it wasn't a knife, it was a pair of scissors. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, now be sure I was correct. He, he was out for six months after this case began after removal during that six months, did he, uh, you may have said this, but he was actually out for six months before he was arrested in December, correct? Correct. 
and he didn't complete any services? No, sir. Okay. Do you have petitioners exhibit three, which is the actual service plan for the parents? Yes. Okay. If you would, if you'll pull that out, and if you would, please just briefly uh, name each service that Mr. Swinney was supposed to complete and whether, or just tell me whether he completed each service or not. Okay. Um, he was supposed to complete the BIP program. Uh, he did not complete that. Um, anger control training. Uh, I do believe he completed that one. Uh, the psychosocial, he did not complete. Individual counseling, he did not complete. Uh, the OSAR evaluation, he did not complete. Um, NA meetings, he did not attend. Random drug testing, he may have done one or two um, during that six months he was out. And then employment and housing are not stable. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, okay, then uh, does anyone else have further questions for Ms. Grissom? No, Your Honor. Okay. All right, thank y'all. Uh, Ms. Wiggins, do you have any further witnesses? No, Your Honor, we rest. Okay, thank you. Mr. I'm, I'm sorry, Ms. Mullinax, any witnesses? No, Your Honor, rest. All right, Mr. Hill? No, Judge, and just for the record, uh, I did uh, speak to Mr. Swinney about uh, today's hearing. Uh, on more than one occasion, he did understand that the hearing was today. He did understand that he could uh, have appeared uh, either by video or in person. We would have made arrangements for him or the court would have made arrangements for him to appear if he had desired to do so. And his uh, his desire was not to appear today. OK, thank you for that. And no, I don't have any witnesses, Judge. OK, thank you. Mr. Ingram, did you have witnesses? No witnesses. All right. Uh, Mr. Ingram, recommendations. Uh, yes, sir. I believe it to be in the children's best interest that the parental rights of Justin Swinney be terminated. Further believe it to be in the children's best interest uh, that their mother, Tina Valdez, be named as permanent sole managing conservator and that the department and all other court ordered relationships be dismissed. All right. Thank you. Give me just a second here. All right. Then, based on the evidence I've heard today, uh, I do find first that it's in uh, the children's best interest that the parental rights of the father, Justin Sweeney, be terminated. I'll terminate those rights today based on Texas Family Code Section 161.001, subsections B, 1, D, E, and O. I further find that it's in the children's best interest that the mother, Tina Valdez, be appointed sole permanent managing conservator of the children. The uh, I will order the department and all other court ordered relationships will be dismissed after all appellate and de novo periods have expired. Ms. Mullinax, Mr. Hill, if you would explain to your clients their appellate and de novo rights. All right, since we have a final resolution in this case, there'll be no further hearings set. Uh, that will conclude this hearing. Judge, I'm sorry, can I, can I interject um, in the hearing again? Uh -huh. I'm sorry. I know you just closed it out. Um, can, can we have a no contact provision between the children and Mr. Sweeney continued? It was um, previously ordered in the temporary orders. And we would just ask um, Ms. Valdez is still having contact with Mr. Sweeney. Um, she's not allowing the children around that. We would just like the, the continuation of that no contact. OK, I will then I will also continue that order that there be no contact between the children and Mr. Sweeney. And Judge, I think Ms. Valdez was uh, wanted to address the court. Okay. Ms. Valdez? I was just going to say thank you all very much. Um, I just appreciate everybody's help and getting me to where I'm at and letting me enjoy my kids. And I appreciate y'all. Thank you so much for helping me out. Well, you're welcome. They, they, you know, you did the work yourself. So you're to be yeah. congratulated on what you've done. So. Well, thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I'll, I have a brief recess, then I'll be back on the Rebus case. Y'all have a good week. Mr. Ingram's with us for the child. Mr. Adams is with us representing the father, Mr. Rebus. I don't show he's with us. And Ms. Christie's with us representing the, Mar the mother, Ms. Marshall, and I show she's incarcerated. Uh, in that case, Mr. Adams, were you expecting your client? I think it's the no, other way. Mr. Sorry. Rebus is incarcerated. Oh, he is? Where's he at? Yes. Is it the GIST unit? Okay. In Beaumont. Okay. All right, then uh, in the Smith case, Mr. again, Ms. Wiggins for the department, Mr. Ingram for the child. 
Ms. Christie for the mother, Ms. Marshall, who's incarcerated, and Ms. Kincaid for the father uh, of the Smith children. I'm sorry, the alleged father of the Smith children, uh, Jesse Smith. I don't show him in the waiting room. Ms. Kincaid, were you expecting your client? Your Honor, I've had contact with him since the last hearing, but I couldn't reach him last week, so I don't know if his phone is disconnected or, or what's going on. So if he if he comes in, uh, that's great, but I, I couldn't reach him. Okay, all right. I'll Does, watch the room. I'm yes. not aware that my client is incarcerated. She called me this morning and I sent her the Zoom link. So I I don't think that okay. she's incarcerated. No, I think you're right. I, I I had an I was looking at an Amy Marshall in the waiting room. I didn't know who that was, but I do see Ashley Marshall in there. So Thank let's you. get her in. So, sorry for that. Judge, I'll point out that Jesse Smith uh, is now pled as a presumed father and not alleged. Uh, the okay. petition was amended to change that. Uh, well, how, what what changed? Did, we found the AOPs. You found an AOPs. Okay. Okay. And we did attach them to the admitted petition. Thank you, Judge. I called Jordan Alford. And have you had an opportunity to um, meet with them in their placement? I have. And how are the children doing in their placement? They're doing really well. Um, is the placement able to take care of all their medical, um, educational, and psychological needs? Yes. And have there been any issues with the children um, since the filing of the court reports? No, there have been no other issues. And in regards to the court reports, we judge, we'd ask that you take judicial notice of those. All right. So noted, and I read the reports. Thank you, Judge. Um, Ms. Alford, um, have you been working with the parents uh, to create service plans for them? Yes. And were you able to meet with Ms. Marshall to complete her, her service plan? Then she did sign it. I just didn't get to file the sign copy yet. Okay, and I think you cut out just a little bit. So um, let me just ask you, did you meet with her? Yes. Okay, so you, you cut out again. Um, I know you're, you're traveling for work. I um, And so is there any way that, let, can we just try it one more time, Judge? And if not, we'll have sure. a call. Okay. Uh -huh. um, did you meet with Ms. Marshall to go over her plan? Yes. And was she able to um, have input on what was uh, placed in the plan? Yes. And um, did she understand everything the department was requesting of her? Yes. And did she sign the plan? Yes, she did. And um, based on the uh, removal, what were the reasons for removal of the children? Um, it was neglectful supervision um, due to drug usage. And on her plan um, is the drug usage addressed via the OSAR evaluation, individual counseling, and parenting? Yes. And was there also an issue um, during the, the case of uh, confrontations with placement at times? Yes. yes. And based on that, is, or is it, oh, sorry, is the department asking that the mother complete the anger control training? Yes. Now, in regards to the father of the two younger children, Jesse Smith, did you go over his service plan with him? We had a family group conference that he participated in. And so he was able to have input on what was placed in his family plan. Is that right? Yes. And have you been able to go over that, that completed family plan with him? I sent it to him via email. I have not been able to get in contact with him in the last two weeks. And um, Mr. A or Mr. Adams also indicated that he, I'm sorry, Ms. Kincaid indicated that she was not able to get in contact with him. Is that the same information that you have for him? Yes. Now, um, so you were not able to go over the completed service plan with him and he did not sign it. Is that right? Correct. But the contents of what was going to be added to the service plan was talked to him at the family team meeting. Yes. And was he agreeable to working those services? Yes. And is he also have services that address the drug um, use issue as well? Yes, he does. And are these service plans an attempt to mitigate the reasons for removal? Yes. And are they reasonably tailored to address the issues in this case? Yes. Now, in regards to Mr. Revis, have you had an opportunity to speak with him? 
Um, I have not. He's incarcerated, but he did send a letter to Keegan. Um, Keegan got it last week. He was the previous caseworker. And so um, I have sent him a copy of his service plan and a letter. I haven't received anything back yet. Now, in regards to um, him, he is currently incarcerated in the GIS unit, G-I-S-T? Yes. And his projected release date is August 9th of 2023. Is that correct? Yes. And um, in his letter, did he indicate whether or not he was agreeable to working with CPS? Yes. And um, it does appear that he is incarcerated uh, based off the inmate search of the Texas um, Department of Prison or Criminal Justice that he's incarcerated for possession of a controlled substance, evading arrest, detention with a vehicle, and unauthorized use of a vehicle. Does that sound accurate? Yes. And um, because of those, were you able to hopefully comply or compile a service plan that would help mitigate some of the reasons for his incarceration, which of course would affect the safety of the children? Yes. Um, and let's see. Now, in regards to um, the children, do you believe it's in their best interest for them to remain in the placement that they're in? I do. And do you believe it would be contrary to their welfare for them to be returned to the parents today? Yes. Do you believe that it would be appropriate for the parents to start working their services and hopefully mitigating some of the reasons for removal before reunification is uh, attempted? Yes. And is there a continuing danger to the health and safety of the children to be returned today? Yes. Okay. I'll pass the witness judge. All right. Thank you. Ms. Christie? No questions, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Kincaid. No questions, Your Honor. Mr. Adams. No questions, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Ingram. No questions. All right, Ms. Wiggins, anything further from the department? No, Your Honor, we rest. Thank you, Ms. Christie, anything further? No, Your Honor, we rest. Thank you, Ms. Kincaid. No, Your Honor, we rest. Thank you, Mr. Adams. No, Your Honor, we rest. Thank you. Mr. Ingram, recommendations. Recommend the department continues temporary managing and servitor placement to remain as is. Uh, inform the court the children are placed with a, uh, a family placement, a maternal aunt and uncle in Amarillo, doing well in that placement. Okay, thank you. Okay, judge, then in Yes? I, I apologize. Um, can I ask Ms. Alford one more question? Uh huh. Ms. Alford, um, are you asking that the court make these service plans in order of the court? Yes. And are we asking for any drug screens today? UA, please. Uh, I'm sorry, a UA? Is that what you said? I thought that's what she said. But so we're just requesting a UA today, Judge. On? Um, uh, the Mr. Smith and Miss Marshall. Marshall, I'm sorry. Okay. Well, I'll just go ahead and uh, admit mine is going to be dirty. So, I mean, I'll go screen, but it will be dirty. Miss Christie, do you want to ask her about that or you want me to? Um, um, Miss, <clears throat> no, you can, Your Honor. Miss, Miss Marshall, what were you, what are you going to be dirty for and why? Uh, methamphetamine and marijuana because I've uh, smoked here and there. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to go and take a drug screen and it come back dirty. And yeah, well, then I appreciate and my services be, be terminated, you know, I mean, being honest. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. When's the last time you used uh, marijuana or methamphetamine? I smoked marijuana on Saturday. I smoked meth uh, last week, I believe Tuesday, Wednesday. Okay. Um, this, oh, did we, have we still lost? Did we lose Miss Alford? Miss Alford, you may not know since you're traveling. Do you know, or maybe Miss Marshall knows, when when she last had a hair strand drug screen? Sir, that was back in like February when we had our court uh, court last uh, month in February, before it was postponed to the 22nd. I think it was on the 13th. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right then. Uh, 
in both cases, I will continue the department's temporary managing conservator, continue the current placements. Uh, I will order the services for in both cases for each parent as contained in their service plans. I will in both cases order that Ms. Marshall uh, take a UA and hair strand drug screen by 4 p.m. today at Care Express here in Amarillo. Ms. Marshall, the, the reason for it, I, I, I appreciate you being honest with me about the drug use. The only reason I want to give you the drug test is to get levels on you so we'll know that you're progressing and your levels are going down. That's understandable. Yeah, well, thank you for being honest with us. So, all right. Yes, uh, in both cases, our next hearing will be the initial permanency hearing that will be on July 24th, 2023. As far as I know, that will be by Zoom like today's hearing. So parties and attorneys can go on the court's online docket a day or two in advance to see what time that hearing will take place. Uh, Ms. Marshall, I need to admonish you that the services contained in your service plan today become a court order at a final hearing. If you have not done those services, your parental rights could be altered or terminated. Do you understand that, ma'am? Yes, sir, I do. Okay, thank you. And again, thank you for being honest with us. That makes things a lot easier on everyone, including yourself. So, Yes, sir. Okay, that will conclude this hearing. For those of you, I'll be back here in just case, a cause number eight two one one five. In Randall the interest Kennedy. of the Pinkert child, we're here on an initial permanency hearing. Ms. Gutierrez is with us for the department. Mr. Ingram's with us representing the child. Ms. Lucero is with us representing the mother, Ms. Pinkert. Ms. Lucero, I don't have anyone in the waiting room. Were you expecting your client? Uh, your Honor, I did send her the link. Uh, I believe she was going to be here. If okay. you just bring her in if she shows up, thank you. Okay, I'll do that. And then I have uh, Mr. Edwards, the father, is not with us and he's not in the waiting room. And I note that he's not attended any hearings to date, so we're not really looking for him. So. The department calls Marissa Herrera. Okay. I wanted to um, draw the court's attention to our second amended pleading. There was a mix-up, as the court knows, with the previous final order out of Potter County. Um, which um, I think switched the identity of a father. We have since amended our pleading to remove that incorrect man as a party and have included the correct gentleman. Um, we will be amending again now that we have our affidavit in support of removal up to date. So that should be coming to the court shortly. Okay. So we still have we still have Clint Edwards, but I, I realized we had the wrong one based on what happened in Potter County. And so now you've got you've got the correct one. Is that is that accurate? Yes, Your Honor, that's accurate. Okay, great. That... I apologize. Our second amended petition um, now refers to the order being modified as the Nut Pro Tunk final order. Okay. Um, signed by the court in December of 2022. Okay. Okay. All right, then. Thank you. You can proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Marissa, who do you work for? St. Francis Ministries. And what do you do for them? I'm a permanency specialist. And is his mother Jessica Pinkert? Yes. And is his father Clint Edwards? Yes. And for the court's um, information, are we still trying to find a good address to serve Clint Edward, Edwards at? Yes. Can you please share some of the steps you have taken uh, to locate a correct address for him? We've submitted an accurate and a diligent search, and we are contacting everybody on those searches to see if we can get a hold of um, Clint. Okay. Have you already contacted a few family members of Mr. Edwards? I was able to get in touch with his brother, and he gave me a phone number, but that number did not lead to Clint. Other phone numbers have not been successful. Okay, thank you. Now, did you prepare a court report for this case on March 20th of 2023? Yes. Your Honor, we ask that the court take judicial notice of that court report. All right, so noted, and I did read the report. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, is the child still currently located in the therapeutic foster home listed in that court report? No, he's in an RTC now. Okay, can you please describe the events very briefly that led to the placement change? 
his therapeutic foster home had put a discharge notice because his behaviors were so violent towards the foster mom. He was kicking breaking things in the house. And so she had put a discharge notice. And so we found her, him, a RTC in Houston. Okay. And when did that placement change occur? That was on February 7th. Since he has been placed in that RTC in Houston, is that RTC taking care of his daily needs like food, shelter, and medical care? Yes. Have they also arranged for a psychiatrist to review any medication? Yes. Is he on psychotropic medication? Yes. Okay. Has the child expressed any opinion on the psychotropic medication? No. Can you give us some details on how he is doing in that RTC placement? He's doing fairly well. He, he has where he takes a step forward and a couple steps back. He's still pretty violent, but they do see progress. Um, he actually had an outburst and was like, can I go to my room and calm down, which was a huge step for him. Um, but he still is kind of throwing things at teachers. He's been kicked out of school at least one time already just with his violent behaviors. Um, he was admitted. Um, Marissa, I believe we dropped, or I believe you dropped off. You had mentioned that the child was doing well. And your honor, can we, and did the court, did I ask the court to take judicial notice of that status report? I apologize. Yeah. I can't remember. Yeah, you did. And I have read it. Okay. Thank you, your honor. Uh -huh. Now, Cayenne, is the child still placed in a foster home in Potter County? Yes, ma'am. Okay. How is he doing in that placement? He's doing really well. Okay. And the father was recently served with personal service. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Now, how is the visitation going between the child and the mother? It is going well. There have not been any issues reported. Okay. And what about visitation between the child and his father, Jawan Thomas? Um, Jawan has not. He has expressed interest in visitation, but I have not been get, able to get a hold of him to schedule that um, since he expressed. Okay. So has Jawan visited the child at all since the removal? No, ma'am. But the mother, Madison Barr, is. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, did you create service plans for these parents in this case? Yes, ma'am. And do those service plans aim to mitigate the reasons for removal? Yes. Can you briefly remind the court what the issues around removal were? Um, domestic violence, um, drug use, and neglect. Okay. And with, were those specific to Madison Barr? Yes. And what issues were there for Jawan at the time of removal? Um, domestic violence as well and neglect. Um, I'm not sure about drug use. I don't believe he drug screened for us when, at the time of removal. Okay. Now, did you ask the parents to meet you and go over or rather meet you and determine what services would be in the service plan? Yes, ma'am. And did Madison Barr provide input for that? Yes, ma'am. Did Jawan Thomas provide input for that? No, ma'am. Was he invited to? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, these service plans, are they the department's reasonable efforts to return the child to the family? Yes. And what services were specifically chosen for Madison Barr if you could just name a couple of the main ones. Um, individual counseling, parenting classes, um, WAVE classes, Women Against Violence um, classes, and just random drug screens. Okay. And as far as Jawan, can you please name a few services that are specifically chosen or tailored for him? Um, parenting classes as well, individual counseling, and BIP classes. Can you explain what BIP classes are? Battering, intervention, 
Yep, something along those lines is domestic violence uh, tailored towards men. Okay, so that program aims to um, help prevent domestic violence. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Are you asking that these service plans be made in order of the court? Yes, ma'am. Did you review this service plan with the mother, Madison? Yes. Did she sign it? Yes. Did you review this plan with Jawan? No, ma'am. Did you make attempts to do so? Yes, ma'am. Did he sign it? No, ma'am. Was Madison given a copy of her service plan? Yes. And was Jawan given a copy of his service plan? No. Why not? I have no way to get it to him. I cannot find him. I can't contact him. I don't have an email address for him. Um, however, he was served in person, correct? Yes. So could you go ahead and mail a copy of his service plan to that address? Yes, I can. Has either parent asked you about having an attorney appointed? Madison has, yes. Okay. Did you read? submit that paperwork to her to fill out? Yes. Your knowledge, has she done that? Yes. She said that she turned it in last Tuesday. Whatever date that was. The 21st. And how old is the child in this case? He's three. Will he be having a CANS assessment done on him? Um, yes, I believe so. Okay. And it looks like that already occurred in February of 2023. Is that correct? Yes. And there were no recommendations given through that assessment for the child. Is that correct? Correct. Are you, are you asking that the court approve these service plans and make them in order of the court? Yes. Do you believe that it would be contrary to the child's welfare to be returned to either parent? Yes. Do you believe that it would pose a physical or emotional danger to the child to do so? Yes. Pass the witness. All right, thank you. Ms. Williams, are you asking for any drug tests for in anyone today? Um, yes, for Madison. Okay, and what, what do you want? A uh, hair follicle anyway. Okay. And she's here in Amarillo? Yes. Okay. And you mentioned that she said she had turned in paperwork for a, a court-appointed attorney. Do you know who she turned it into? I do not. She said that she took it to the courthouse and turned it in, but I don't know okay. who she needed it to or anything. All right. Haley, do you know, did we get it here? Mr. Ingram, any questions? No questions. All right. Ms. Gutierrez, anything further from the department? Nothing further from the department, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Ingram, recommendations? Continue department is temporary management conservator, continue placement as is, the child's doing well in the placement. Okay, thank you. Okay, I will continue the department as temporary management conservator, continue the child's current placement. I'll order that uh, Ms. Barr, both hair strand and UA drug screen by 4 p.m. today at Care Express. And we will we'll be looking for that paperwork for her, for an attorney. So. In the interest right, of the Rogers that, we'll child, we're here hearing. on a final hearing. Ms. Wiggins is with us for the department. Mr. Ingram's with us representing the child. Mr. and Mrs. Rogers are with us. Wiggins? Thank you, Judge. I call um, Ada Ledford. Okay. Ms. Ledford, you were previously sworn this morning, I believe, so you're still under oath. So, Ms. Wiggins, you can proceed. Thank you, Judge. Uh, Ms. Ledford, are you the case worker? Yes, ma'am. And how is she doing? She's doing okay. Uh, and where is she currently placed? She's done. She's at. And um, is that placement um, about to change? Yes, ma'am. And what were the reasons for that? Um, Nick is doing very well. She actually leveled down on her uh, level of care to, I believe, basic. Um, and they don't take basic kids there. Okay. So she's unfortunately being moved, but that was due to good behavior. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And um, are we looking for a place? Uh, where are we looking for a place? Um, so we originally wanted to keep it around Houston. We are having trouble. She's been sent out statewide, um, and we're having trouble actually finding her anywhere. 
um, right now. But we had originally wanted it to be around the Houston area so she can continue to hopefully go to the same school and be around her friends and stuff like that. Okay. And um, she has expressed a desire to stay in the Houston area. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And um, in regards to um, the parents, um, is she having contact with them? Yes. And how is that contact going? It's going pretty well. Um, are we asking that the department be named um, a permanent managing conservator of Nick? Yes. And do you believe that's in her best interest? Yes. And why do you believe that? Um, Nick is not able to return home. Um, so I feel she also wants to go on to go to college and do the aftercare and live in an SIL. Okay. And do you believe that would be helpful for her? Yes. And um, are the parents supportive of this plan that she has? Yes. And are we asking that the parents remain as possessory conservators? Yes. And that their contact be as directed or as as both parties want, as she wants and her parents want? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And in regards to um, child support, are we asking that no child support be ordered, but that medical support be ordered? Yes, and is that just due to the parents' um, abilities at this time? Yes. And let's see, is there anything else that needs to be addressed with the court today? No, ma'am. Is there anything that the court can do to help with placement? Or is that just something that St. Francis is working on? I think it's just something we're working on, just finding, getting a place that will take her. Okay. And um, all right, if there's anything that, Anything else that the court needs to be aware of? No, ma'am. I'll pass the one to Judge. All right, Mr. Ingram, do you have questions? Uh, Ada, Nick is on a couple of psychotropic meds, but those are being monitored uh, on a regular basis. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And I think you mentioned Nick does have a plan, at least as, as of right now. Uh, when she turns 18, she wants to remain in care and maybe uh, go to college perhaps being a supervised independent living situation, something along the, those lines. Is that correct? Yes. And, and that's, that's very good for her. And it's good that she's got a plan and it, it shows a great deal of maturity on her part. Would you agree with me? Yes. Thank you. That's what it All right. Thank you, Mr. Or Ms. Rogers. Either do you have questions for Ms. Ledford? No, sir. Okay. All right. Uh, Ms. Wiggins, anything further from the department? No, Your Honor, we rest. All right, Mr. Ms. Rogers, anything further? No, sir. I think I would just like to say that while this is a hard decision for us, it's very we support it very much because we are really proud of Nikki and the decision she's made, and we feel like this is going to help her in her future. Um, even though we'd love for her to come home, we feel like this is a better plan for her and it will help her be more successful. So we just appreciate um, St. Francis and the court for helping us come up with a plan that's best for Nikki. Okay, well, thank you. Um, all right, then, Mr. Ingram, anything further? Uh, no, sir. I, I, I don't think Nick has anything that she wants to address uh, to the court, but I would tend to her if you had questions for her. You know. I'll just ask Nick if you'd unmute. Is there anything you need, wanted to tell me today? No. Are you on board with what we're doing here today? Okay. Uh, can you unmute? I have one question that I'd, I'd like to hear from you just to. Okay. Nick, uh, they, they tell me you're on some psychotropic medications. Do you believe they're helping you? Yes, sir. Okay. And are you being seen routinely by someone about to, to monitor those meds? Yes, sir. Okay. You know, you're plenty old enough. If, if you have some uh, complaints about your medications, be sure and let everyone know, including Ms. Orr and Mr. Ingram, because you do have uh, a big say so at your age and what kind of medications you're on. If we need to get you some other type of help or any other evaluations, we'll be happy to do so. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay, then uh, I will continue. I will name the department permanent managing conservator, name Mr. and Mrs. Rogers permanent possessory conservators. I'll order no child support at this time, and just because I have to, I'll set medical support for each parent at $35 per month each beginning May 1st, 2023, and continuing every month thereafter until uh, further court order until or, or until Nick turns 18. So, okay, um, appreciate y'all working that out. Uh, Nick, congratulations on leveling down.
and I uh, wish you the best in the future. The SIL is a really neat program. So uh, I think it'll be very beneficial to you. So, okay, uh, that will conclude this hearing. For those of you involved, I'll be back in at 1140 to call our final Randall County case. That's a placement review after final order. On